Hey there, fellow adult collectors. Welcome back. David Eon here with another showcase for your consideration. And today we are taking a look at the Fisher Price Adventure People Astro Knights. The Astro Knights, and what you see is what you get. This is pretty much it, except that the glider also came with a blue figure. Now, and this is another by request video. Now, Fisher Price Adventure People. I've done some showcases on them before. People don't seem too terribly interested in them, but I did get a request for this one from our museum, which I've been taking requests to look at showcases of various action figures. And so the Astronites is on it, and that's what we're doing here today. And these were produced in the 1980s. And I know that it says 1978 here. I can almost guarantee that these probably were not made that early. I want to say that the glider was made after 1980. The glider came out first, and then the carded variants came out here. The astronauts that you see on the sides here came out in probably 1982. And I believe that's when that standard of card came out, because if you've ever seen Fisher-Price Adventure People, and you've seen the narrow cards, and I'll pick this one up here, and it's about that thin and there's no artwork so it looks like this with the tab in the center that's the 70s version of the card this is an 80s version of the card and I, I think they started doing this in like 81 82 any Fisher Price Adventure People experts out there you can go ahead and chime in and you see the original price there KB Toy Stores it was originally what does that say 189 and it was reduced to 129 on clearance. I miss KB Toy Stores and their massive clearance prices. You younger guys will never know the joy of going into KB and seeing like 500 Power of the Force Star Wars action figures on the pegs, three for five dollars. And on the back here they advertise, here's some of our other sets and accessories and then on the bottom here it says uh, 1979 Fisher Price toys and again I, I don't think that these came out in 1979 actually I think all of their space adventure figures like the X-ray people and Firestar 1 and Alpha Probe and everything came out after 1980 the astronaut at the time and these are the only two again they only came in blue and mustard yellow. These were not very popular with the kids. And the reason they weren't very popular is because there's a lack of articulation. These are a little shorter than three and three quarter inch. I think these are actually three and a half. Yeah, three and a half inches. But there's a lack of articulation, an obvious lack of articulation. You can see that there is no leg movement at all. And also, there's a lack of articulation in the head movement. If you look at your traditional Fisher-Price Adventure People action figures, their necks are kind of double-jointed. They can turn side to side and they can look up and down. So rather than five points of articulation, technically they're kind of six six points of articulation because the heads can also nod. But then you look at Astronite here and he only has three points of articulation. He's jointed at the shoulders and at the neck. The head can turn side to side and the arms can move but they don't go up and down. They rotate out to the side so that it actually looks like the picture. And you see that also here demonstrated inside the packaging because this Astronaut has one arm up and it just sort of rolls up and out to the to the side into like a Y shape when his arms are up as opposed to being able to put the arms up and down and he does have gripping hands but it doesn't look like you could get anything into them the way they're shaped it's a very narrow opening inside that gripping hand so kids looked at these and they were like what the heck you know this was not a popular toy at the time and you'll notice also that they're both on the exact same card. This is not an error. Fisher-Price did this occasionally, 
Most of the time the artwork will be unique and it is really well done artwork on these cards. The artwork's outstanding on a lot of them. But occasionally they'll cut corners and use a single art panel for two figures, which is what they did here. They didn't bother to repaint a mustard yellow astronite. They just said, screw it, put them both on the same card. And that's what they did. <laughs> Basically, that's how they handle it. And they did the same thing with this set as well. And this is the glider set. And you see that there is a blue astronite pictured on the glider. The glider's not painted on the bottom. It's just a styrofoam glider. And there are two clips on his back. If I turn it sideways, you can see it. And these also have that clip because it's the exact same figure. And he slides into the slot on the bottom of this glider and you just throw him. It's as simple as that. That's all you do. And this to me looks like kind of a fun toy because you can throw him. Although some little kid once upon a time didn't think so. As you can see, there is a Christmas tag on this card. <laughs> Merry Christmas, uh, little Jimmy. Jimmy didn't want this, but that's okay. I do want it. And if you're asking how come you don't take that tag off, well, there's some history here. Obviously, once upon a time, this was not wanted. This was not wanted and it ended up in someone's attic or basement for years and years and years and then found its way into my hands and now it's mine. Also, this is a bilingual card. Obviously, this is printed in both English and French. On the back of the card, nothing. <laughs> There's nothing on the back of the card. As I say sometimes, Fisher-Price spared every expense and cut corners wherever they could. Nothing printed on the back, not even advertising like they did here. Saved all that ink and used the same card for both variants of the figures because indeed there is obviously a blue version of this and they just carded it however they wanted. The yellow one with a yellow glider and of course a blue one with a blue glider or more to the point the stem would be blue. And these are not easy to find still on the card. They're actually rather difficult. You can find the Astronites from time to time and all of the carded Fisher-Price Adventure people are sought after. The glider set, however, because I have been hunting for the blue glider set and have never been able to find one. The yellow one the last time a yellow one came up for sale, like on eBay, was like two years ago. And I thought about it. I was like, yeah, maybe I can get that one too. But I passed on it. And I want to say it closed at around 170. But these just don't come up. They're pretty scarce, despite the fact that they were not popular at the time. And I'm a fan of the Fisher-Price Adventure people. And historically speaking there is a great deal of significance to these figures because they are the original sort of three and three quarter inch figure. Fisher Price made them from like 1975 to 1985, so about a good 10 year run. And I'm sure some of you might be aware that Fisher Price Adventure People ended up being the models for the original Star Wars prototypes. When Kenner wanted to demonstrate what they were trying to do as far as action figures, they took some Fisher-Price Adventure people and reworked them to look like Star Wars characters so that they could show what they were trying to achieve as far as action figures. And then because of the popularity of Kenner's Star Wars, three and three quarter inch became the standard action figure size for quite some time. But Fisher Price was doing it first. 
Any thoughts on this? Is this something that you've seen before? Were you aware of the Astronites? Did you have Astronites? Are you a fan of Fisher-Price Adventure People? I am. I think they're great sets and highly underrated and difficult to find. You can find loose examples on eBay all day long, but boxed and carded examples are very, very scarce. These are figures that had good playability, good play value. They were durable. Kids liked them. And you had to use your own imagination. They weren't based on an actual character. They were proprietary to Fisher-Price. They were their own entity. Fisher-Price created them and did not create a storyline. There was no TV show, no comic book, anything associated with these. They were just adventure people, and you had to use your own imagination. And they produced more than 75 figures, if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember how many play sets, but I know there was more than 75 action figures in total. And some of them are pretty tough to find, even loose. So any thoughts on this? Is this something you would be interested in? If this was your set, would you be determined to try to get that sticker off? I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it. I think it adds to the history of the toy. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. Please do give the video a thumbs up. If you got something out of it, I hope you did. Share it if you can. Subscribe if you knew all that good stuff. Check out our other videos. I do a lot more than just vintage showcases. We do unboxings of modern figures. We do toy industry and adult collector discussions. Weekly roundups. Vintage toy fair catalog tours. Vintage toy commercial showcases and so on. So you might find something interesting in the realm of nostalgia. And I hope that you do. So, what more can I say? But thanks for watching. And we will see you again soon.